welcome back. If you've been with us from the very beginning, then today's show will be as exciting for you as it is for me. Because today we have the very first guest we ever had. 60 shows ago. Today we have none other than Jennifer Ciara. My name is Vin DeQuino. Jen, let's talk writing. Absolutely. So great to have you back again. Uh, seems like yesterday, yet it seems like a long time ago, when you came on here and you talked about iPutin, mm -hmm. you talked about self-publishing, and a lot has happened over the past year. So we need you to fill us in. What has happened since you've been since you were with us all those shows ago? Well, first of all, I want to congratulate you on 60 shows. Oh, thank you very That's much. That's amazing. So congratulations. <laughs> thank you. We've had some very interesting authors I on know. here. I know. I watch. Very interesting. <laughs> oh, good. Glad to hear that. And hopefully they've been watching as well. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, so tell me a little bit about what's been going on. Yeah. I, Putin is out there doing all kinds of things, and Putin himself is doing a few things. Yes. Uh, we can't help noticing. But talk to us a little bit about... Where has Jennifer Ciara been? Okay, well, last <laughs> time I talked to you, the book had basically just come out. So I was kind of in that newbie, <laughs> just been published stage, kind of, you know, I, I need to learn a few things. I need to learn the ropes. And, and even with my, my, my day job is I'm an editor. I'm a book manuscript editor. So even with that background, I still had to learn the ropes. I'm, I'm in the industry, but I still had and to learn the ropes. And you've been very busy editing and oh, yeah. working with clients. Absolutely, yeah. working with clients constantly. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Yep. But, you know, I'm, I still have to learn the ropes just like everyone else. And I had, you know, it's it's been an interesting year because what happened was after I started, you know, getting all this wonderful information, I wrote my second book, which is I'm going to, you know, edit the name. It has yeah. a, you know, public access. We public have to be access, careful. Public access, but it's called the No uh, BS Guide to Self Publishing. <laughs> the No BS Guide. The No BS Guide to Self Publishing. To Self Publishing. And it is a No BS Guide. I mean, it's a no th BS. Th this is the the real meat and potatoes. Right. Yes. Tell us what this book has to offer those people out there who are interested in self-publishing. Well, I wanted to make a book that basically just told the absolute truth of self-publishing. The get basics. The basics, but even going more into the basics and budget and the intricacies of you know where I did cover design and where I did formatting and things like that. Okay, let's backtrack just a minute for those people out there who aren't familiar sure. with this new thing called self-publishing. Sure. Because self-publishing has been around a long time. Yes. There was a time when it was called Vanity Press. Yes, yes. And it was kind of like taboo. Yes, uh, absolutely. And people say, well, if you self-publish, you're never going to make it. Right. Because people who self-publish are people who can't make it any other way. Right. Well, things have changed big time. Drastically. And people have gone away from traditional publishing that could last forever forever mm -hmm. it could take so long mm -hmm. to get a book published and sometimes not get published mm -hmm. and it was you were at the mercy of these traditional publishers mm -hmm. today not only can you self-publish but you can self-publish internationally mm -hmm. and your book could be out there uh, I know uh, hauntings I got an email from someone in London uh, although that is not a self-published book uh, my self-published books are out there too. Uh, so now talk to us a little bit about this change in self-publishing sure. and why today it could be lucrative to self-publish a book. Yeah, I, well, as you said, it was taboo. It had a huge stigma attached. In some, in some arenas, it still has a huge stigma attached. Uh, uh -huh. For example, self-published authors can't really, they, it's really hard to get on NPR. It's really hard to hard get Hard to on, get reviewed. Hard to get on Jon Stewart. Hard to get on New York Times review. They wouldn't do it. So now you can get reviewed with different mediums, with bloggers and right. you know, local shows like this and, and other types of things. So you do have access to getting reviews and getting media, but you have to be very creative. Yep. And you have to be a very hard worker and you have to do it 
in very different ways. And as you said, the great thing about self-publishing is you have all the creative control and your book can be seen internationally. I'll give you an example. Um, a good example is I put in my book. Yeah. I get emails from people in Egypt. Wow. I get emails from people in Australia, wow. the Philippines, China, you name it. So that's who's reading my book all over the world. Yeah, and, and aren't there self-published authors who have made it big time? Oh, absolutely. You know, bestsellers? Absolutely. Amanda Hawking, she was the first one everyone yeah, knows Hawkins. about. Amanda Hawking, who, who writes um, fantasy, so she's one. Uh, the mother and daughter team who wrote Elf on the Shelf, they yeah. are self-published. Those are good examples, yeah. but if you go onto the internet, you can see a whole host. In fact, right. um, I'll talk about this later in the program, but I was recently interviewed by a magazine, and the yeah. agent... The big time, <laughs> big time. And the agent said... The agent who was also interviewed, there was three of us, a publisher, an agent, and myself, talking about self-publishing, and the agent works with self-published authors, and a lot of them are millionaires. And, and you can name the magazine. Yeah, oh, the magazine's name is Poets and Writers, Yep. and it will be on newsstands on around October 25th. And not to confuse it, Poets and Writers is also an organization sure. for yeah. writers, mm -hmm. but they do have a publication, and that yeah. publication is actually available on newsstands just like any other publication. Yeah. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff, and the interesting part is that when they came to me for the interview, they said our writers or our you know our audience is dying to know about self-publishing. Yeah. So the whole issue is about self-publishing. So big. So self-publishing. Uh, Another wonderful thing about self-publishing is that you could publish a book right. and then take that book and go sell it to a traditional publisher sure. because you own the rights. Is that right? Sure, absolutely. I mean, it depends where you buy. You know, this gets a little complicated and technical, but it yep. depends where you buy the ISBN from. Right. If you buy your own ISBN, then yes, and you have your own copyright, yes, then you, you own the rights. And if you own the rights, you can you have the right to, to try to find a traditional agent, to try to find a traditional publisher. And a lot of people do that, Amanda Hawking, she's a good yeah. example, yeah. And then you, you go out and you can do it. And the other wonderful thing about it is you are in control. Yeah. For example, you just did something very interesting. Mm -hmm. You took the cover of I, Putin. Yes. And you decided to make some changes. Yes. Tell us about that. Well, I want to say that the <laughs> wonderful part of it is when you do it, you have to, I mean, I paid my cover designer, but right. to actually do it on the site, on CreateSpace, it's free. Yeah. And all it is, I think it took a week for them to take down the old cover and put up the new cover. And they said yep. to me that the book will not be on sale for that week, but that wasn't true. The book was still on sale. Ah. So really, you don't lose out. And what, yeah. I, what I did was, if you look at the covers, basically the old cover is just Putin's face on it mm -hmm. right there and then the new cover I had won a couple awards so that's a medal of the award oh wonderful and then what you're seeing the back of the book is the old back of the book and then if you turn around that mm -hmm. book you'll this see one. Yeah, yes, the, the yes. cover changes uh, the back cover I'm changes. going to take this and I'm going to put this right here like this uh, and I'll, I'll just we'll explain focus on it, it and you'll yeah. see that in the back you've kind of tightened it up a little bit I've tightened it up, and what I've done is put in some great uh, cover blurbs I've gotten from reviews. So I just put those in, and you know, and shortened some other things, and updated some things, mm -hmm. and that was it. Now on the front cover, you have a little gold seal here. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that little gold seal. I won honorable mentions, or excuse me, the book won honorable mentions at the New York Book Festival wow. and the Hollywood Book wow. Festival. So I was really excited about yeah. that, and everyone likes a book with a medal. So the book so. is selling, <laughs> and the book is yeah. getting out there. Yes. And this book is self-published. Yes, and I have to, I mean, I, I can't lie, I have to thank Vladimir Putin for that. And the book is dedicated yeah. to Vladimir, Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin's been in the news yeah. uh, quite a bit lately. He does a lot of crazy, um, interesting Stuff. things. And, you know, he's been in the, the news with Snowden, as everyone knows, and now with Syria. Yep. And he's going to be in the news more because, for people that don't know out there, the Winter Olympics is in Sochi, Russia. Yes. So he will be even more in the news. Yep. So I thank him for that. Yep. Now, <laughs> for those people who didn't see episode one, sure. I, Putin, is about Putin. Mm -hmm. And where did you get this information, and why is this American girl writing about <laughs> I, Putin? <laughs> Well, I lived in Eastern Europe for two years, and he came into power when I was living there, and that began a 12-year fascination with him. 
and I studied and researched and even took that research to NYU where I received a master's degree in Russian studies and creative writing. So the book is fiction. Yes, it's but fiction. But it's based on fact. Absolutely. It's a mixture of fact a and fiction. Mm -hmm. It's a mixture so, of both. So it is fiction. We, yes, we absolutely. have to make sure we make that point. Absolutely. But much of what is in there, especially historically, yeah. really happened. Really happened. Really so happened. I found it fascinating. I, I learned more history of, about Russia and Putin than I did in any other way. So, right. so it's a fascinating book. It's a Thank wonderful you. book. Uh, so you wrote that book, and Putin taught you a few things. Yeah. Uh, since you were here last, what did you learn? about being a writer and did some of those fears come true? Well, this is going to be a long answer. <laughs> <laughs> so this is going to take up the rest of the show. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but this is going to be a long answer. So okay. basically, here's the thing is, is I kind of, I think I was, no, I know I was a newbie and, and I felt being in the industry, you know, I know who my target audience yeah, is. Yeah. I know this, I know that. And let me tell you, I had a year, <laughs> yeah, I had a year of mistakes and challenges and learning uh -huh. and relearning. And, you know, I'll give you an example. I think a good example is target audience. You know, if you write a genre, if you write genre fiction, so for example, right. romance or mystery, right. you pretty much know your your yeah, target audience. Be reading those books. Right. Erotica, E. L. James, you know, Fifty yep. Shades of Grey. YA. Yeah, YA. Yeah. You know you know who your target audience is. Uh -huh. With I Putin. Uh oh. Uh oh, that's I Putin. Oh. <laughs> Whatever you do, make sure <laughs> you shut off your cell phone, which I have no idea where it e even is. Uh, oh, I do. Uh, so, get rid of the cell phone. Step one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I thought my target audience was going to be men interested in politics, especially international politics, 40 years and over. And those are some people who read the book, but I'm finding a lot of young people read the book. I get emails from young people, again, all over the world. I get emails from young people in Brooklyn. I get emails from soccer moms you in the Midwest. You get phone calls. And I get phone <laughs> calls from them, exactly. And I get, <laughs> and from soccer moms in the Midwest. So my target audience, I found out after a year, it's, it's not people, who you thought it was. It's not who I thought it was, so it's people that will read any type of book, fiction or nonfiction, as long as the premise interests them. And they have to be hardcore readers. So those are my those are my target audience, hardcore readers. And that's actually right. how I read. Yeah. So so I so the great part is the one thing I'm proud of, and I have to say this, is the one thing I'm very proud of is I did not go out and spend thousands upon thousands in my first year on publicity trying to guess who my target audience was. I, I was patient and yeah. I studied who my target audience was, and now, recently, I just put money in for a publicity campaign. And isn't it changing? I mean, now that all of a sudden Putin's in the headlines again, yeah. uh, there's people out there looking for Putin books. They are. And yeah. calling your book I Putin was a very good idea. Right. <laughs> uh, because now people are very interested in who he is and what he does. Right. Uh, so times there are changing. And yes. that yes. does affect your book. Vinny, I think you make a good point because a year ago, people were like, oh, Putin, I kind of know who he is. Yeah. I kind of don't get it, you know, kind of. And now people, I say, you know, I wrote a novel about Vladimir Putin. They say, oh my gosh, that's so hot right now. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, because of this whole Snowden thing. Right, Snowden. Uh, right. And it's not over yet. And no. as you say, now the Olympics are going to happen, he's going to be in the paper again and again and again. Constantly. So, so that's a good thing. Yeah. And you know, there's people who, again, you, you, those key words, you know, when you go online and you type in Putin, I'm sure your book is going to come up. So that's a good thing. Right. Uh, all right. So let's talk about the no BS guy <laughs> and talk to me about money. Oh, yeah. So there's a whole lot of people out there who want to self-publish, and right. they say, oh, man, I heard about self-publishing. I'm not putting out $10,000 to publish my own book. Do you have to? A 10000 is... Big. A, is, it's a lot. It's big. At once, at one, for upfront costs, I would say that's a lot of money. But let's, let, let's start at the basics. Okay. If I want to self-publish my book, okay. can I do it free? You can, you right. can. And it gets the book in your hand. Yeah. 
But what you're saying is that's not enough. Now, I self-published Kiss the Candy Days, right. Hello. Right. I also self-published Cicada. Right. And it's on Internet. Yeah, sure. If you type my name in, those books come up. Sure. Uh, so they're out there. Cost me nothing, nothing right. to do that. However, when you, you get what you pay for. <laughs> so if you pay nothing, it's very hard for that book to get out there. So tell me what you call the basic, what, what you really need to do to get that book pretty much out there. I mean, I think, Vinny, you, you and I had a good discussion um, earlier today, and that yep. was about goals. What are your goals? Yep. What are your goals I, as an author? If you just want a book that you could say, I'm a writer, look, yep. then it doesn't cost you a nickel. You have to buy the book yeah. when you self-publish it, so it's going to cost you five bucks. Uh, that's it. That's yeah. all you're required to do. But when you do that, you're doing all the work. You have to do your own editing. You have to design your own cover, front and back. You have to submit it. Mm -hmm. You have to do your own proofing. Basically, you have to do everything. Mm -hmm. And then you get a proof. You send back and say, okay, I approve the proof. And there's the book in your hand. And if you want to sell it, you tuck it under your arm and you go sell it. You have to buy copies and then sell those copies and hopefully make a profit. The difference between what it costs you to publish the book and what you sell it for. Right. And people ask, wait a minute, what's the gimmick here? The publisher has to make something. Absolutely. It's supply and it's a, a print on demand. Right, sure. Which means if you sell, a hundred books. They print a hundred books. They get paid up front. They, you order them and then they print them. So it's not like the traditional publisher mm -hmm. where traditional publisher, when, when I published with Dell, they did like 3,000 copies mm -hmm. right off the bat and they had to pay for them. You know, so because they're printing these books, there's an output of money. Also, they give an advance mm -hmm. to the author. So there's money up front. Here, there's no money up front. So they're not risking what a traditional publisher risks. Right. But they make money when you make money. Sure. So that clearly is a, a difference between the two. Right. So from there, what happens? Now, there's no advertising. When, when I was publishing with major company, there were ads in the Times, there were ads all over the place. I was like thrilled. Right. Uh, and there was an output of books. When you self-publish, bookstores generally will not put your book on the shelf because they can't buy it on consignment. So what happens is if they buy it, they're stuck with it. So they don't buy it. When there's a major publishing company, they do send the book out and they can get their money back, the bookstores, if they don't sell the book. Big difference. Mm -hmm. So the bookstores don't take a chance on a self-published book. Mm -hmm. So what are the steps that a writer has to take, and it may involve some money, to get that book out where it's going to be seen? Well, it depends. I mean, it depends on your goal. I had a client I recently worked with and he said, you know, I just want this book. It's my family history. I yep. just, I just uh -huh. want it out there. I just want it for my, my kids, and that's all. So we edited the book for that. He didn't need a fancy cover. He right. didn't need anything. Now you have someone like me or someone like you or someone, you know, who's – I consider myself a very serious self-published author. Mm -hmm. And for that, you know, you hire a cover designer. And what I say in the book is basically anything you can't do yourself, if you're not – you know, uh, savvy design wise, if you're not, if you can't edit your own book, then don't do it. Then yeah. pay someone else to do it. You pay for the services that you yeah. can't do. I mean, a self publisher will, will offer you templates mm -hmm. for Absolutely. covers. And you could get it. I mean, when I did my book, I had a cover that I designed and I took that cover and I uploaded it into their template. 
I designed the back cover, uploaded that. Spine came up. There it was. I submitted it. There, there it was. But it was my design. Was it the best cover for my book? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Uh, if you want a cover as beautiful as yours, you're going to have to pay some money. Yes. Ballpark. What kind of money does an author have to pay to get a professional cover? Well, I have a budget in the book. And professional, I'm just going to give you a ballpark figure yeah, of, of because it, it the varies. Whole, you know, the, from cover design to copyright to buying isbins to, you know, to formatting, the, paying someone to format the book to paying someone to edit the book. I give a ballpark figure of around three thousand. Okay. I give a ballpark figure, so that's so about it's about accurate. three thousand yeah. dollars to get a very professional cover. And it could be more, but yes, that's. Does that's, that include the back cover, or is that just front cover? Uh, that includes both, but the thing is, this my book is small. It's a novella, so you know you also have to. If you're writing a hundred, my book is fifty nine thousand words. If you're writing hundred twenty thousand word fantasy, it's a different story. It's going to be much more money. Okay. So yeah. So for example, I I give a, a fact I give in the book is, if you want if you want to give your book to an editor, a professional editor, and the book's around eighty thousand words, you're going to spend around. 1800 for that Now, why job. does the size of the book affect the cover? Well, it doesn't affect the cover, but it affects the editing job. So It affects so the when editing. You, okay, yeah. so we're not talking strictly about the cover. No, we're talking but, about everything. Okay, right. the cover is one thing, but then editing. So you pay a professional editor to go in there and look right. at every word. Grammar, vocabulary, right. the works. Right. To make sure that that book, from cover to cover, has no mistakes. Has no mistakes, but see, there's a misconception, and the misconception is that if you have this editor look at it, that they're going to do a perfect job, and they do. They do the best that they can. I'm an editor. I do the best that I can. It's never perfect. But in real life, in real life, when you're in a traditional publishing house, you have five to ten eyes on a book at one, ten yeah. eyes of editors, and there's and still keeps mistakes. Going for yeah. I found a couple mistakes in the Harry Potter series, and no offense to the Harry Potter series, that's how it is. They have the but best it does, editors. Yeah, it's very hard to do. It's I mean, very I've hard. read books. I, I I always tell about Ray Bradbury, yeah. who someone said, "Mr. Bradbury, how do you know your book is ready for the publisher?" And he said, "When I can read it from the front cover to the back." without making any changes whatsoever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, how hard that is yeah. to do. Uh, because it happens. I mean, I still read Kissed Candy Days and go, oh, I can't believe, how did I miss that? How did we all miss that? It happens. All right, so we're talking two or three thousand dollars just to have the cover designed. No, no, no. Three thousand dollars for the whole thing. For, wow. For, for okay. Isbin, cover, okay, cover, cover design, Isbin, buying Isbin's, buying copyright, um, getting paid for uh, getting formatting paid for editing everything so that's that's in the book it, the budget is in the book and it breaks it down now cover design how much is it it completely depends uh, yeah. my cover design I think I paid around 200 250 oh, so it wasn't okay. that bad you yeah. have to know the person to go to I name who I went to in the book so, so if you really want to do this right yes now we said you could self-publish for free. Right. But if you want to do it right, out-of-pocket might be total? Uh, startup costs, you know, just to get every, the book printed and everything, again, I would say around 3000 Okay. And then probably your first year, if you do it right, you're probably going to put out another 3000 maybe, depending okay. on what you do, maybe publicity. So it publicity. could cost you as much as five to $6,000 to I'm, do this thing right. I think I've easily, when you said $10,000 in the beginning. Could be I, real. <laughs> I think I've, I've probably spent probably about ten on this book. But you're also making money selling the sure, book. Sure, sure. So at some point, hopefully, you'll at least even out. Uh, so sure. So people out there who think that every time you publish a book, you're going to be a millionaire. Forget no. about it. <laughs> Doesn't always happen. Uh, it's difficult to make money as a writer. Yes. And there's a whole lot of writers out there who aren't making a penny. In fact, losing money. Yes. Uh, I know sometimes I go do talks. Most of my talks that I do are free. Yes. You know, I go out there and if I sell one or two books, it's great. All right. Bad news for you. Our time flies when we're together. Yeah. Uh, and it's flying now. Right. Uh, we only have a couple minutes left. 
We talked about iPutin. We talked about the No BS Guide. It's an ebook. You can get it online. Everywhere. Uh, and it's inexpensive. Yes. So one of the things you need to do is learn about self-publishing. It's not something you just go into and it's just one, two, three, boom, done. You, you have the book. Yeah. Like anything else, writing is a commitment. You have to make sure you know what you're doing and read up about it. This book is a wonderful thing. Read poets and writers. Uh, look at their magazines. Look at the writer's market. There's so many different books out there for writers to teach you about this. It's more than a hobby. If you're serious about it, if you want to be a professional writer, you have to be professional about it. You have to do the things you need to do. Jen, you help us learn those things. Uh, we certainly always appreciate your being here. Uh, some final words for the audience? Yeah, the, um, I just want to say one thing is that the article we were talking about, the, the self-publishing article yep. in Poets and Writers, it's going to be on stands um, around October 25th. It's on and the it's internet right now. And it's great information about self-publishing. And I'd like to say that it's not just about me being interviewed, but it's also a publisher and an agent. And this great. agent represents major, major great. people. And it's not real. It, this right. is not an article you wrote, but I you were interviewed. interviewed for that article. Yes. So you'll be in that. That's very prestigious. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and very important because you know what it's all about they need to know what it's all about yeah it's not it's i'm not trying to promote myself i'm just saying look at what the publisher has to say look at what the agent has to yep. say and then there's a nice picture of me so you can see that too. oh <laughs> wonderful well here's the story you've met jennifer we've talked about self-publishing is it a viable way to get your book out the answer is absolutely absolutely so we want to thank you very much for tuning in to our show. We want to thank Jennifer for coming back. Uh, 60 more shows, we're going to have you back again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for tuning in. It's been a pleasure having you with us. Jen, it's been a pleasure having you with us. Thank you for tuning in.